All right, thanks for hanging around for everybody for uh, day two. Uh, my name is Matt Carey. I am a reporter and analyst for Vixio Gambling Compliance, which provides regulatory intelligence to all kinds of stakeholders in and around the gaming and payments industries. My focus in particular is on US sports betting and iGaming industry, so it's been great to be here the last couple days. And I'm excited to moderate this panel because it kind of touches on both of those areas, the intersection between gambling and TikTok. Um, now, I've been back there getting mic'd up for 15 minutes, but I'm pretty sure TikTok is still legal in the U.S. <laughs> TBD, I think the panel's 20 minutes because we had to make sure that we'd get it all in before they ban it, but um, any longer we couldn't really be sure. Um, so I'm going to let uh, Mike and Connor introduce themselves and talk a little bit about themselves and their companies because they can do a much better job of that than I can. So Connor, I'll start with you. Yeah, my name's Connor. I am, a, I am the uh, social media content specialist over at Fliff. All I do is I do all the content creation for our TikTok page, and yeah, Mike? Yeah, hey everyone, Mike Savaris from Pro League Network. Uh, Pro League Network is a portfolio of niche and emerging sports that we own, license, and distribute and uh, produce specifically for wagering. So sports in our portfolio include things like a professional mini golf property called the World Putting League, uh, Slap Fight Championship, We've got uh, professional pillow fighting, car jitsu, which is two guys doing jujitsu in a car, and several others. And, and what we do is uh, we package and produce that content specifically in gaps in the U.S. wagering calendar and distribute that to sports books and fantasy operators. I've seen a few. The car jitsu is a wild watch. It's yeah, I mean, uh, it's, so the car jitsu, you know, we filmed about 20 bouts to date. The first bout that we released on social media, I think it's got over 90 million views now. Wow. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been great. So that kind of segues in, you know, first question, an obvious one, given the topic of the panel, you know, very simply, how do you guys and your companies use TikTok? What are the benefits of doing so? Yeah, uh, so I think TikTok for us is really about awareness for our sports. And when I mean I talk about awareness, I talk about it in a couple of aspects. So the first is um, some of our sports are a little strange, you know, guys wrestling in a car. And what we want to emphasize there, not only is that A, that this is a sport, but B, that you want to appreciate the athleticism and actually how hard this sort of stuff is. Like we use uh, black belts, you know, these guys are like black belt jujitsu guys who are doing this stuff. It's not like, uh, I used an analogy before, we're not like dragging truck drivers off the street, you know, trying to do this thing. So, so what we do is, you know, we were trying to raise, raise awareness for the sport, we're trying to highlight um, the professionalism of our athletes, and then we're also trying to join the conversation, which I'm sure we're going to get to, uh, to you know, inject a bit of humor and a, a bit of lightheartedness uh, into our sport. But it's really about awareness. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, I think a lot of brands in general want to use TikTok as like a user acquisition um, platform, which that's not what we use it for at Fliff. It's a more of a brand awareness, and it's really a way to, for us to connect with our users or potential users um, on a much more personal level. So like my face will be on the page um, for a lot of the posts. Um, and then like the Instagram, obviously, um, uh, it's, not, it's not much, uh, it's very generic. And this is much more personalized and that's, that's what we do. So, you know, every social network kind of has its own language and its own style. You know, I, I use Twitter and Instagram very differently. Instagram and TikTok very different, well, somewhat differently, more, probably mm -hmm. a little more similar, but you know, what are some of the differences for you guys between TikTok and other social channels which you use? I think for us, um, TikTok, it's a lot easier to build a brand, an organic brand from scratch on TikTok, purely because the way the algorithm works, um, you have a much higher probability, I think, of a piece of content going viral uh, on TikTok than it is you know, trying to slug it out, building a brand on Instagram, for example. Um, you know, I think the flip side to that is you know, you have one piece of content that goes crazy, it's no guarantee that the next piece of content will do as well. Um, and so, you know, there, there's, a, there's a give and take there, I think, a little bit. But, but for us, I think it's, uh, if we're thinking about the organic, you know, essentially we're launching a series of organic brands uh, from scratch, and TikTok is a great way to introduce ourselves uh, to the audience. Yeah, it really differs from uh, Instagram and Twitter in that with Instagram and Twitter, you're basically reaching people that already follow, follow your page, whereas with TikTok, you could reach millions of people. Um, like our highest viewed post has like 3.2 million views. 
obviously we only have 22,000 followers. So you're basically um, reaching people that may not care about it, but um, yeah, yeah, it's obviously, uh, it's, I, I compare it to like a slot machine. Because you yeah. never know, when you post a piece of content, it might go viral, and then the next one might only get like a thousand views. So and it's, it's much like, more inconsistent. Yeah, and it's also at different times. Like, we had a piece of content. We, last week, we did our first uh, World Putting League event, which was uh, 26 professional mini golfers over two days in, in Myrtle Beach. And uh, we posted a, con a piece of content last Wednesday, I think, which is about a you know, 30 second highlight clip of like two golfers. You know, did fine, whatever. And then yesterday, no, two days ago, uh, that piece of content went from, I'm going to make a number up at like 5,000 views to 350,000 views in the space of six hours. Uh, and you know we did nothing to it. We didn't. We didn't promote it. It was just. It just happened to be sitting there a week later. Something got picked up an algorithm, and away we go. Now uh, we can't predict. We can't predict that, obviously. Uh, and I think we'll probably get to this before later in terms of capabilities. I think for us, and for, probably for people in the room to think about is, what are the capabilities that you develop internally? That once you see that happening, what do you do? Right. So for us, it's like, all right. We were like we analyze the comment, comments and we see there's like there's there partic there's a particular for whatever reason they're liking these two athletes right one guy was kind of this like pudgy overweight guy and like I don't know they just someone att attached to him so like all right more of that guy right yeah. and so we're going to like throw out you know a, a ton of content you know probably rearrange our content calendar we did rearrange our content calendar to specifically react to what we saw um, the algorithm was was uh, was was throwing out and now I think. You know, again, you cannot predict, you know, what's going to go viral or when it's going to go viral. But I think for for those of us in the room who are thinking about this, it's more about, you know, what do you do if that happens and how how quickly you react and what are the capabilities you've got so you can react. How do you, you know, when you have something go viral, you know, if you see the view counts on TikTok and everything like that, how do you really measure success using TikTok in terms of kind of looking at the... the difference between total eyeballs and quality eyeballs, the ones that you're going to be able to convert going forward? Yeah, so I actually think quality of eyeballs and total eyeballs go hand in hand with this, with this platform. Um, basically, if you're not posting quality content, the way the algorithm works is it's not going to go to as many people. So two metrics that you can actually use to predict, like if a piece of content is going to go viral, is watch time and shares. If people are watching your video all the way through and they're sharing it with their friends, that's a big indicator on if your uh, video is going to go viral. And so you can kind of like create pieces of content like that, look into the metrics, and then um, use that like same setup, I guess, when you're uh, creating additional pieces of content and try to like copy that in a different context. And then that can help grow um, more pieces of viral content. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's hard because it's it's uh, seductive almost to like look at the law of big numbers of TikTok and pat yourself on the back, right, and say, "Ooh, we got you know whatever it is three, four hundred thousand views, sixty million views on the other thing." Um, you know, once you pass that, how many of those views are in the U.S.? How many of those in a betting state, et cetera, et cetera? I think uh, I think those are all fair questions to ask. But we, I kind of think of quality slightly differently when it talks to the TikTok, and it's kind of a, a backhand way of of why why it's so good at creating this awareness. Um, because I think that, um, at least for us, the audience that it brings um, actually gives us a lot of leads to, you know, maybe there's other athletes with big profiles that we want to work with. There's other, um, other influencers. It's the, it's the quality of, like, the audience in terms of the people looking at it and then actually reaching out to us, uh, which is actually quite valuable and, and almost unique to TikTok in the, t in the sense that they're the most likely to see it for the first time there. So, uh, you know, example of... Um, of uh, golf, like ever since that piece of content got ca went out, you know we got uh, we've gotten hit up by a couple of um, semi pro pro golfers that want to take part in our league now. Same with Kajitsu, you know. I said we, we these guys are you know they're all black belts, um, you know, from gyms around the country. But now you know people see our content, it goes up. We get started contact by sort of MMA athletes, you know, professional MMA ath athletes who want to compete. So. That's kind of the way that I view quality in the sense of, of the audience, less so than you know a narrow segmentation of the, the large number to see how many are in a, a gaming jurisdiction. Connor, this might be more for you. Do you see any correlation at this point between when you have something that really hits and goes viral and sort of either leads that convert back to signups for Fliff, or is there anything like that that you see at this point? So we don't... if, if 
No. Okay. In, in short, no. Um, if there is like a viral piece of content, it's really hard to quantify, at least through TikTok's analytics, of how how that converts to signups. Um, there's not much analytics that they have. It's a little bit worse, honestly, than uh, the Instagram and Twitter analytics when it comes to that. But that leads directly into my next question, which was going to be, yeah, how does that differ between you know what what is it easier to quantify those sort of things on other platforms than TikTok? And is that something that TikTok can improve on going forward? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, they can definitely improve on how they do their analytics. I, again, think Twitter and Instagram are far ahead of them in that. But. I think for us, it's, it's easier to get people off Instagram and Twitter onto your own or no, right? Uh, swipe ups, for example, on stories, like which, which you don't have in TikTok. So I think in that respect, you know, the downside maybe to the large audience in TikTok is most of the time it's going to live on TikTok. And I think if you're really, you know, you can tr you can have Linktree and everything else, and you can try and convert people, but generally the conversion is is fairly low. How have how has it? And this is kind of going back a little bit, but how has it changed over the last, I'd say, year to eighteen months? I mean, Twitter and Instagram are you know have been monsters for a decade. TikTok's still growing. I think TikTok was still the most downloaded new app in 2022 in the U.S., which is, you know, still a sign of its continued growth. How has it changed over the last, you know, 12 to 18 months in terms of interactions, in terms of usability, you know, any thoughts you might have there? Yeah, so it used to be pretty easy to go viral. You could literally, like, ha have nothing to say, nothing important to say, and you'd go viral for the most random reasons. And that's why it's so popular now. But as the app keeps maturing, as the platform keeps maturing, it's much harder to grow um, your brand. And so, obviously kind of struggling with that, keeping, you know, yeah. and it's one of those platforms where you have to post on it like three times a day if you really want to grow, and it has to be quality, so keeping that creative drive and um, amount of content you're posting is kind of difficult, but. Yeah, I think that uh, in the past sort of six to 12 months, there's a lot more brands doing, I guess what I call like meme chasing or trend chasing, right? Yeah. So maybe before where, you know, you spot a trend on TikTok, you somehow figure out a way that it shoehorns into your business and, you know, you'll have a decent chance of it, of it doing okay. But now I think, like, you've got, you know, you've got agencies who are just sitting there monitoring trends and as soon as they see a trend that's, you know, 10% relevant to the brand, they'll throw out, a, throw out some, a piece of content that's, you know, trying to cash in on the meme. And so I think that's just, there's just so much copycat stuff doing that now. Um, that it's just it's harder it's a harder mm -hmm. way to uh, develop an audience. And to touch on like the trends real quick. Um, I think it's important to like whoever like is running the TikTok page, give them like pretty much autonomy because I know there's like some brands out there where if you're going to post a piece of content, you have to run it by you know a marketing director or something like that, and that's a lot of red tape to go through, especially on a platform that basically operates on trends. And those trends will pass in three days. So you got to pretty much give them autonomy, make sure they can just follow the trend. And Yeah, yeah, we give our guys a green light just to, just to go. I mean, we're a small team anyway, but the people who look after our TikTok, like, not all of it's going to be great. You know, we, we post guidelines where it's like, all right, we need something. You know, for our content strategy is, you know, part of it, you know, honoring the sport, part of it is honoring the athletes, and then part of it's sort of a lightheartedness. And so we use that those three pillars, if you were, and hopefully that, you know, our guys can spot trends and shoehorn stuff into that. And that kind of, again, kind of segues into what I want to talk about next, which is sort of, you know, thinking about responsible gambling in the sense of, you know, for all the reasons TikTok is appealing to, you know, as a marketing tool, you have that younger audience. It also raises red flags. I spend a lot of time looking or talking to legislators, talking to regulators, watching legislative hearings, and you know, pretty much any time TikTok comes up, it's in the context of responsible gambling. So, how do you guys think about responsible gambling? Whether it's you know active steps you take or you know guidelines. You, Mike, you mentioned guidelines. Guidelines you have in place to sort of you know guardrails to you know areas you don't want to step, landmines you don't want to step on. How do you guys think about it? Yeah, I think for us, I mean, we don't talk about lines or anything like that. We're talking about the sport and the brand and the athleticism of, of, of the competitors. You know, that's what we use TikTok for. Um, there are other, you know, we, we use Twitter and stuff to talk about lines or bets of the day, all that stuff. That's fine. But TikTok, we do not, we do not talk about that sort of stuff. Um, so I think that that's really, you know, how we approach it. Um, that's really, you know, that differently. Okay. And then uh, Flip, Flip is a, like a free-to-play um, platform. And so... We're unique in that we can kind of create content around um, losing a bet 
per se. Um, so that's part of like the social experience. And I think what differs our um, TikTok from a lot of other sports book TikTok or sports betting TikTok is a lot of other sports betting TikToks more surrounded about winning bets. And I think what's unique about Flip, since we're free to play, um, we can talk about losing and embrace the fact that losing is part of this, like, of sports betting. And so that's kind of how we approach responsible games. And we were talking about this a little bit outside and sort of, you know, it is a fine line between, right. you know, sort of being, you know, flipping about losing and being too flipping about losing right. and some of the costs that go with that. Um, so I joked about it at the beginning, yeah, but... That, you know, at this point, I think that the threat of TikTok not being long in the U.S. is a, is a pretty real one. Um, I mean, just this week, the White House has backed legislation, the catchy named Restrict Act, um, that would give the, I believe, the Secretary of Commerce the ability to ban TikTok if he saw fit. Just yesterday, the FBI director said it, quote, screams out with national security concerns. Um, so I guess the first question here is, you know, just a, a blunt one. How how does your business change if we wake up one day and TikTok is banned? Is it does it materially change it? Is it a situation where you're just reallocating resources to wherever we all go next? You know, how does it how does it change things? Yeah, I mean, before we get to that, I mean, there's a view about okay, uh, the Warner Bill bipartisan support certainly looks like it's in trouble, but uh, also. Politically, politically, it would be an interesting situation to ban TikTok. I mean, you know, take uh, it's the, a large constituency. <laughs> take the baby's favorite rat rattle away from like every Gen Z in town. Like, good luck being voting, you know, in five or ten years trying to get voted <laughs> in. But um, but even aside from that, let's assume your question is valid. That uh, your question is correct. That it does get banned. I think the uh, the internal capabilities, the muscle memory around short form video production does not change if TikTok goes away. I think at the margins, some stuff around meme chasing and all that sort of stuff, that that you know is unique to TikTok in my opinion, versus uh, some of the other uh, social platforms. And so I think that is sort of dialed down a little bit, but you know, the, 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 uh, the content engine required to create short form video content is relevant, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or, or any other platform, but I think that, um, that remains. Um, same to what I was referring to before about the, the speed of reaction if you do see something that, um, that tends to go viral. So, um, you know, at the margins, 15, 20% changes. Uh, to be honest though, it, is, it will be more difficult for us in terms of the, that awareness point that I mentioned before, right? So that where is the platform, and if it's not tech talk, it'll be something else where, you know, you're able to really um, go for, uh, you know, is a good source of awareness that's not, you know, the, the other social channels which kind of suck at it right now. And I've been around TikTok for, I don't know, three, four years now. Um, and every, like, it seems like every year, every few months, there's something, somebody coming out um, from the government saying they're going to ban TikTok, and it never happens. So, I mean, this looks like it's gaining, like, legitimate steam. Um, but I think then we'll just like trans have to transition into other short form con or short form video content. Um, it's obviously not going to be TikTok in that you're not going to have the same virality that you have on Instagram Reels and uh, YouTube Shorts, other stuff like that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to transition to that, I think. And I mean, I still think, you know, no matter what, you're going to be making, you know, Two videos a day, video a day, whatever you know, whatever that that rhythm is, whatever is right for your business, um, you know, then that's going to be, and that's just going to live on another platform, and it's it's going to stay the same. What is the next platform? Because I mean, you know, we look at t Twitter; it seems to be glitchier and glitchier every day, particularly when it comes to video content. Um, is it something we're not on yet? Is it, like I said, is it Twitter and Instagram? Is it more YouTube? You know, where do you where do you go from here? I would I would say Instagram Reels. Mm -hmm. um, but YouTube Shorts is also gaining a lot of steam recently. So yeah, I mean, I think YouTube YouTube has a lot of innovation to go uh, on their Shorts product. Um, but look, it's got the base, it's got, and it's got the audience. Let's be honest that um, that would be the one there. You'd think that could p take up a lot of the slack if if TikTok were to go away. We have I think twenty seconds left, so I'll, I'll close with prediction time. This time next year, iGaming next. Are we still? Is TikTok still legal in the U.S.? I sure hope so, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and say it will. Yeah, I don't I, know. If, I think so. Yeah, think it will? I mean, look, I think even if the legislation passes tomorrow, it's going to take a like the the, the, the the what you have to do. The Secretary of Commerce has to do. It's going to take a year, eighteen months to get to work through that anyway. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Con and I am right at time. Perfect timing. Connor and Mike, thank you guys so much. Appreciate appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks everybody for sticking around.